the Santa Cruz Bronson. The bike I should have bought? I've been obsessed with mullet bikes since I first heard about them. But are these bikes a fad, or are they actually the superior wheel setup? I rented one a few months ago and brought it to Asheville to see what all the hype was about. This is the Santa Cruz Bronson. I've been pumped to try out a mullet bike for months. So we'll see how it compares. My last bike was a Santa Cruz 5010. 27.5 inch wheels, short travel, and a pretty efficient climber. So I didn't really expect the Bronson's longer travel, bigger front wheel, and heavier weight to perform better than the 5010. But I was surprised. Yeah, this thing climbs pretty well for a big old bruiser. The larger front tire rolled over just about anything, and that eagle gear really helped me get up the steep sections that I was never able to conquer with the 5010's 11-speed drivetrain. Alright, I'm already in the lowest gear, so it's not going to get any easier. Would it be as good on the climbs compared to a shorter travel bike in the hands of a more skilled rider? Probably not. That was close. But to be honest, this doesn't bother me at all. I really don't care whether I ride or walk to the top, and I'm not too proud to admit I do more walking than I probably should. Downhill now. Gonna go straight into Ridgeline. You. Oh. I want a bike that lets me have more fun and ride faster on the way back down. So is this what the Bronson is built for? In a word, hell yes. Oh, that was a little narrow. Oh, it just rolls over everything. This bike feels super stable on the descents, even in the wet, muddy conditions on Ridgeline this day. Compared to my 5010, the Bronson's slacker head angle and longer wheelbase make the bike feel planted no matter how fast you go. But that doesn't mean it's boring. Some long travel bikes can be pretty dull on more mellow terrain or in the hands of a newer rider, like me, who doesn't have the skill to push the bike to its limits. Not so with the Bronson. This thing is fun. It'll get off the ground no problem, if you have some basic jumping skills. All right, and that is Hickory Mountain. All right. Now, the trail I've been waiting for this whole time, Ridge Line. Supposed to just flow like this all the way down, one and a half miles, no pedaling. Let's see how true that is. Oh 
man, these burns are nice. Woo! Despite how long the bike is, it never feels like you're piloting a cruise ship. It's controllable, and steering is responsive without feeling twitchy. Oh. That was a lot of water. This bike has just enough travel to be perfectly comfortable on all but the most gnarly of double black diamond trails. You could even make an occasional visit to a bike park and still have a great time. Oh, oh man, it's so good. All in all, this is a super versatile bike. And in my opinion, the mullet setup has earned the right to be taken seriously. So with all that being said, why didn't I buy one? Because the bike I rented retails for $6,349. Even the cheapest model costs more than five grand. Now, I'm not saying the bike isn't worth the price, but if you're a beginner on a budget, that puts it well out of reach, which sucks. Luckily, more brands are launching mixed wheel bikes, including direct consumer brands like Canyon and YT, which tend to be less expensive. Even so, Canyon's new Spectral Mullet is $4,900, still out of my price range. Oh my god, it's so much fun. Man, these flames are so good! Rollers. Guess I'll just keep waiting for the industry to get saturated with mullets to drive prices down. But until then, look out for a first ride review of my new Canyon Spectral 29 in the coming weeks. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so I can keep going out, getting covered in mud, and making fun videos for you all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Wow. That is probably the single best trail I've ever ridden. Oh, but we are wet, muddy, dirty, cold, but having a great time.